Cavs Warriors. We celebrate all these dynasties. It's what we talk about when you and I go in a drive for an hour. We talk hoops. We don't talk about the year anybody could have won it. We talk about MJ. So suddenly, why do we hate Cavs Warriors and resent it? We love Shaq Kobe, loved MJ, loved Bird Magic, loved Bill Russell. This is bad for the league. The only thing we're robbed of, really, um, is that we never got LeBron versus Kobe. We never got that. In the You're finals, right. You know, and we didn't get enough Lakers versus Celtics when the Celtics were good with Kevin Garnett and Paul Pierce. We didn't get that enough. But the, the perfect example is you look back my childhood, we start playing – the, one, like one of the best EA sports games outside of Madden was Lakers versus Celtics and the NBA playoffs. That's actually what the name of the game was. <laughs> Lakers versus Celtics <laughs> and the rest of the NBA play, right? And that sold. They, then they had Lakers versus Bulls. Like, we think back historically about the great NBA finals, and it, it, maybe it's a foregone conclusion. I think it is, but I don't think that's bad for the sport. It's up to, it, it's up to everybody else to step up their game, and I... I, I, I thought you made an interesting point, though I disagree with it yesterday, that if the Warriors win, they blow out the Cavs, this will signal to people they can't move around. I think that I think you'll still have, have motivated people. The Clippers are motivated to try and get as much as they can out of it. I think the Celtics are motivated to take that next step. I think there are still motivated teams, but I do think it's a foregone conclusion that these two teams match up in the finals. So what did you make of Draymond Green calling out Kelly Olenek as a dirty player? Um, Draymond Green is the biggest hypocrite in sports right now. He, in he in really the world. Um, in sports. I, I can't – in the world. Yes, yeah, the I could go sports. other places in the world, but in sports. I mean, think about it. He says – he compliments the Cavs and says they're playing great, but they're playing against the East, and those teams haven't shown up. Like, wait, they played against the Portland Trailblazers who didn't have Nurkic and aren't great, right? And now he's – then he, they beat the Jazz who didn't have George Hill for three of those games. And Gobert got hurt. And Gobert was hurt in the Clippers series, was just coming back to health. So he's criticizing the Cavs opponents because they're weak. They've played against weak opponents. He's criticizing Kelly Olynyk for being dirty. By the way, all Kelly Olynyk did was set a legal screen. Or hard maybe screen. It was a, right? It was just a hard screen that somebody should have called. And frankly, uh, Kelly Oubre should have seen, like, this is the nutcracker. This is the guy that was kicking everybody below the belt last year. He's constantly flopping and flailing and talking trash to everybody. Like, I, I don't mind Draymond's act, but let's not act like people don't think of. Now, if he said, like, look, I know I'm a dirty or people think I'm a dirty player. I understand what Kelly Olynyk's going through. And that's not what he said. He said he's a dirty player straight up. It's as if the pot is calling the kettle black. So, and finally, on Kawhi Leonard, not available, Nick Wright said, he goes, you can say what you want. You should have used Kawhi Leonard, hurt or not, as a decoy. If LeBron wasn't on the court in the last minute of regulation, like Kawhi Leonard was, we would be so savagely bearing LeBron James. So if No, you, we didn't. LeBron James got cr had cramps in the NBA and Finals. And we crushed him. We, no, we did Who crushed him? Well, I remember going on that day, and, and this was a time when there was email. Like you would read your email. Yeah. I, I don't even know if I have an email now. <laughs> I, uh, seriously, honest to God, I, I have a Gmail. I, I sent you an email yesterday. It was very heartfelt. Thank so, you. And I remember that day having to defend LeBron for like two days. I'm like, folks, have you ever gotten a leg cramp at night? And oh, you're like looking worst. for a Gatorade. When, you're, you're, when, you, when you ever seen somebody. So that, that, is, that, is, that is inaccurate. Like, look, I love Nick. Okay. And I think he, I can't wait for the, his future here at Fox Sports. Okay. But it's crazy. Because because we, we did, in fact, defend LeBron James when he had these massive. When your body shuts down, there's nothing. When, when Larry Bird had a, had, had a back injury and he missed time, we did, in fact, give him a pass. We didn't make a big deal of it. Granted, sports radio wasn't the same. We did the same with LeBron. Like, look. Look, my, my takeaway from that is I, I think we're getting – we should take a snapshot. The Spurs aren't going to – if they win, they're not going to beat the Warriors. We know okay, that. Yeah. But Manu Ginobili has been the best and most accomplished foreign player in the history of the NBA. I know that Akeem Olajuwon is a great scoring center, and he won those two titles when Jordan wasn't in the finals. Okay, I went, One when he's playing baseball, one when he came back and they lost to the, to the, to the Magic. Like, he's great. And Dirk Nowitzki has been an MVP – and been one of the great all-time scorers in modern history. But Manu Ginobili has literally won everywhere he's been. He won two, two European titles. He got a, a world championship and a gold medal for Argentina. Argentina was never, forget about a challenger, they were never in the discussion. 
And then whatever's been ask of, asked of him, he's done. Like, I know that Robert Ory is big shot Bob. He's a, he's a better player than Robert Ory. Like, this is a guy where everywhere he's been, he's found a way to win games. And game five, they won because of him. The dunk, the three-point shooting, the block shot at the end, the toughness, the attitude, the versatility at both ends of the floor. Like, my takeaway is they won without Kawhi Leonard because they have a great culture of toughness and because they have one of the all-time greats, should be a first ballot Hall of Famer in Manu Ginobili. Good seeing you, buddy. Great to see you as well.